Welcome, my name is Scott Coey. I'm a Senior Manager in Global Financial Services at Amazon Web Services. Today, we're talking about building a cloud-first strategy to deliver value and innovation at scale in the context of a digital transformation. And today, I'm joined by Jen Goodison, the CTO from Engineering Platforms, and Kate Adamchek from Global Digital Platforms, ITSO. And they are both part of Wealth and Personal Banking, or as you'll hear about it referred to a lot today, WPB. Jen, great to see you, and Kate, it's awesome to finally meet you. And thank you both for taking the time to join us today. Kate, you've chosen to host engineering and deployment platforms on AWS. Can you talk us through the process behind that decision, the strategies, and ultimate drivers in, in making that selection with AWS? So I think the main driver behind um, choosing the cloud technology was to deliver uh, our HSBC customers more than uh, future online banking and to keep up with the uh, current trends, um, delivering new features and functionalities um, to make their life uh, easier, better and more efficient. Um, so uh, the, the, the logical step was to move uh, our services and building them uh, on the cloud infrastructure uh, to leverage uh, cloud benefits like um, you know, provisioning infrastructure uh, faster, uh, saving on savings on costs, um, providing that extra uh, capacity, uh, improve our service resilience and disaster recovery uh, procedures. Uh, and that all aligns with HSBC Cloud First strategy. And, and I guess it's great to see and hear how AWS and our partnership with HSBC has helped to address those, I guess, two or three key pillars of a cloud-first strategy of resilience, security, and of course, stability. Um, can we just pivot slightly there, Kate? And I just want to understand a little bit about the HSBC vendor lock-in environment and elaborate how some of the challenges we've had there with AWS and HSBC and, and, and your internal vendors and how we've helped and worked with you there. So as mentioned uh, before, um, HSBC is strictly regulated environment and very often we couldn't use the vanilla uh, services that, that you were providing and we had to overcome uh, engineering uh, uh, challenges um, and all those uh, in-log um, uh, requirements or um, lock-ins lock were coming from specific uh, functionalities or niche features that we needed. The good of the example of locking was how we managed um, uh, data in third-party uh, AWS accounts owned by the platform tenants. Uh, there were lots of different connectivity patterns that we had to marry up together. So uh, with your help, we created um, like a Kubernetes operator uh, on top of, of managing those accounts, which then allowed us to uh, bring in that extra functionality that we needed. And meet the regulatory requirements that, that come with the data <laughs> on top of that, yeah. Um, Jen, with that, if we, if we, I want to talk a little bit more about your customers, and I think just following on from Kate there, probably your internal customers yeah. and what you can share with us, obviously, and better understand the focus you have with them on, um, I guess, delivering value and innovation I mean, your internal customers ultimately look after sometimes other external customers, and they have their own demands and challenges that you have to balance with the wider WPB strategy. So how's that jigsaw puzzle all fit together? With WPB, every dollar counts. We don't want to be spending um, money on the same things across the different teams. So what we don't want is we don't want our value stream engineering teams to have to be tackling some of these engineering problems and some of the governance and regulatory problems that, that Kate's been talking about. We want to tackle them once and then give everybody the benefit of it. So when we think about a team who's building a new journey for a customer or a re-engineered journey for a customer, we want them to focus on delivering value to their external customers, so to the customers of HSBC or, the, or our, our staff colleagues who are using the systems, rather than tackling the um, the issues around how they'll deploy the code or how they'll, how they'll host it or how they'll monitor it or all of those, those kinds of things. And so my team is all about efficiency in the rest of WPB. We're all about making it easier or quicker or less frustrating or whatever it is. Um, and which is one of the reasons that we have a, a strong product team. So whilst we don't have external customers, we don't have people who are asking us to re-engineer a journey. What we do have is we have engineers 
out in the teams who have requirements on this takes me half a day to do, I'd like to do that in five minutes, please. And so our product team, our architecture team, engineering and, and Kate and the SRE team work really closely together to make sure that the backlog that we work through isn't just delivering value for us. Sometimes we fall into that trap. It's, it's delivering value for the people who use our environments. Because what we're trying to do at the end of the day is to build a platform people want to use rather than a platform that they are told they have to use. Jen, we've talked a little bit so far about wealth and personal banking's vision for their cloud adoption. You've talked about simplification, operational efficiency, um, scale and innovating internal, external customers. I guess within your teams, and, and jump in here too, Kat, as well, what's the, the vision or what's your North Star for the, the delivery of making your cloud adoption successful and how do you plan to achieve it? We've come from a background of the last few years where we've, we've had the early adopters of digital platforms within HSBC and Kate's been working with that team for, for quite a while. And we've learned a lot. We've learned how not to do something. We've learned some really good lessons. We've, we've had some brilliant successes and we're really well positioned now both with the people that we have on the team, the thinking that we have and the support that we have within HSBC to build a platform, the tooling around the platform, the pipelines that are fit for purpose and are, are facing in the right direction. So can be future proofed as much as we can, but we can position them to, to keep innovating. And the way that we want to get there is we are looking at our platforms as a set of capabilities that come together to form something that the engineering teams can work on. Those capabilities are now very well defined. We understand the maturity of each of those things and we understand the order in which we need to focus on developing them. There are some areas of the platform that can be one size fits all. But there are lots that can't. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to tie the engineering teams and the value streams down to this is how something is and this is how you will use it. We want to give our teams flexibility to work in the way that they need to work for their business outcomes. But what we don't want to do is to give them ultimate freedom to do absolutely anything in the way that they might think is the right way. Because we'll end up where we have been in the last few years, which was with a large proliferation of standards and tooling and um, technologies on a sing single platform that's supported by one team. So our North Star really is that we have a platform which is very well defined. We don't let anything get deployed onto that platform unless we understand its path to being evergreened. We don't let anything go onto that platform unless it meets our standards or, or has a path to meet those standards. And we don't have anything, any patterns that are approved on the platform which aren't strategic to the bank. So we could have gone through the legacy estate and worked on a pattern to deploy absolutely anything onto SHP, but we haven't. What we've done is we've looked at the various technologies. So our, our platform North Star really is that we won't let anything go onto that platform unless it's an approved technology or it has a path to move to an approved technology. We won't let anything go on there that doesn't adhere to the standards. That might be API standards or security standards or other things unless it has a funded and proven path out to reach those standards. And we're doing the same thing with patterns. So we talked about the work that we're, we're doing on patterns with your team. We're not just looking at everything that we use in our legacy estate and building a pattern to deploy that onto cloud. We're looking at what should go onto cloud, what shouldn't, and having a set of patterns that can be used to migrate from a legacy technology to something that's a bit more strategic. And that way we reduce the estate in terms of the numbers of things we have, the numbers of different sets of standards that we have, which means that we'll be more agile in the future and going forward. It's not just a lift and shift, it's adapting, it's providing the skill sets for the agility for the teams, as well as ultimately you know, the customer centric vision that HSBC has. From an AWS perspective, we see the vision, we see the strategy. And I guess I'm just interested in understanding this customer centric strategy, this innovation model to drive innovation at scale that we've talked about. I guess there's definitely not one size fits all, but is there um, some learnings or some um, skills you've learned from a past migration that can give a little bit of a blueprint going forward for you? 
I think there's a few things that we've learned. Um, one of which is that cloud and getting to cloud isn't the end of the journey. Actually, it's not, all, it's not always the start either. We need to be really careful about what we migrate to cloud or what we build on cloud, because it, it, it isn't for absolutely everything and, and on-prem absolutely has a place. We've also got to be conscious that in the, the highly regulated environments, we have markets who can't go to public cloud. Their regulators just won't let them do that. So we need to be able to support applications running on cloud environments on-prem or cloud-like environments on-prem as well as public cloud. Um, in, historically, I think we've, we've had a bit of a tendency to say that thing there, I'm going to put that on AWS and then picked it up, put it on AWS, wiped our hands and gone off to do the next thing. And then what we found is that we have an application that might run, but does it run efficiently? Does it run in a way that we can support it and maintain it and upgrade it and improve it? And is it costing us an absolute fortune? We've seen through the work that Kate and the team do that our platform costs are spiking in some areas because of things that some of the application teams have done. So my team are um, growing in the migration space. So we're bringing more people in to look at what should we migrate? How should we migrate it? And make sure we get down to the why of the thing that we, we want to do. So that application there, we're not just gonna move it because we can, we're moving it because it's the right thing to do. And we'll move it when we're ready to move it. And that might be after we've engineered, re-engineered it. It might be before we've re-engineered it. it, depends on that use case. Yeah, I think big part of it is changing the mindset uh, from something that we all knew yeah. Uh, and uh, walk into something uh, new, whether it's technology or the way that uh, ways of working, mm -hmm. if you like. Mm -hmm.